Kicking off the list at number 10, Nuclear Sight List. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists. I'm not sure if you can tell, but apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress. Well, it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featured every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program, and it was released publicly on the government printing office's website and draft forum by accident. Yeah, just a casual PDF that shows us literal maps to stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads back in the day. We love those. The only PDFs I actually enjoy are those ones, actually. Does this stuff happen often? How does this happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said these screw-ups do happen, and it doesn't look like a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay, we'll trust the government. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. In our ninth spot, we have the UK Special Demonstration Squad. This is the name of a group of undercover police officers in the UK. Now, the things that they did are going to shock you. For example, they would steal birth certificates and identities of people that had died at a young age. They'd make sure that they would be around their age and then use their identities. The younger the person died, the better, because that means they didn't already live a life that they would have to cover up. And then they would go around with this new identity. Some cases they actually got into relationships with women, but the whole time they did so just to spy on them. In November of 2015, the Metropolitan Police Force apologized to seven women tricked into relationships by these officers. Like imagine that, dating someone you're madly in love with, sometimes even having a kid with them, only for them to be like, oh, sorry, gotta go, I was only dating you to get intel on you and your friend circle. It's disgusting, and it's actually happened to multiple women. In our eighth spot, we have the radioactive waste. Apparently, there's a huge radioactive dumping zone located in Tonawanda, New York. In fact, they dumped more than 37 million gallons of radioactive waste from their World War II atomic bomb tests. This area has a high rate of cancer and thyroid conditions, and this is the reason why, and no one's talking about it. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis tests. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals living at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. This was a state-supported institution for children with intellectual disabilities. And what they did to these students was give them hepatitis in order to track the development of the viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. They also injected them with a number of drugs to see what they would do to their body and the hepatitis. Imagine intentionally making a group of people sick for an experiment. The grossest part is that when the government was exposed for this project, they tried to justify their actions by saying that these people were probably gonna wind up contracting it anyways. In our sixth spot today, we have Operation Popeye. This is another very wild one. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program during the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1972. You heard me correctly. The government learned how to control the weather. Basically, they wanted to increase rainfall in certain areas to prevent enemies and military supply trucks from being able to travel. In fact, they caused a number of landslides and flooding in that area. Weather manipulation has since been banned from use for military gain. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with HIV. In the 1980s, the HIV epidemic broke out. No one knew how it spread, they just knew that it should be feared, and tons of LGBTQ plus community members were sadly contracting the virus. Well, rumor has it that HIV was a government experiment that was meant to wipe out the undesirables. Of course, the US government has denied this claim, and it's just a conspiracy we don't know for sure. But based on the other experiments done on minority groups, it's hard to know what to believe. In our fourth spot today, we have Project 112 and Project SHAD, or S-H-A-D. Project 112 and Project SHAD took place from 1962 to 1973 and involved a number of veterans or military personnel. Basically, both tests involved exposing these people to substances they might want to use in warfare. Nearly 6,000 people were exposed to Coxiella burnetti, which is Q fever, Staphylococcus enterotoxin B, which causes 
food poisoning, and sarin and somin gas. Sarin is a very, very dangerous nerve gas, and somin can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on the skin. These men had no clue that they were being exposed to this. Moving on to number three, we have Project Sunshine. This is another very messed up government project. During the 1950s, the US government was using stillborns to conduct radiation tests on. They wanted to determine the effects that radiation would have on humans and how much we could withstand in case of a nuclear fallout. They called this Project Sunshine, and it was anything but rainbows and sunshine. What's sad is that the government was stealing body parts and tissues from morgues without family's consent. It said that more than 1,500 samples were gathered worldwide. This is incredibly sad and sick. Coming in at number two, we have the syphilis experiments. In 1932, the US Public Health Service created an experiment to see the health effects of untreated syphilis. But the test subjects were told that they were receiving free treatment to cure their syphilis. And that was a lie. Instead of giving the men the recommended penicillin treatment, they gave them placebos like aspirin. Sadly, 28 men died of syphilis because of these experiments, 100 more passed away from syphilis-related complications, and 40 spouses contracted this disease. And 19 women who gave birth passed on syphilis to their newborn children. In 1997, Bill Clinton apologized to the survivors and their families on behalf of the government. And he admitted that the tests were, and I quote, profoundly and morally wrong. And in our number one spot today, we have the radiation tests. In 1953, a number of tests were done on pregnant women to see the effects that radioactive iodine would have on them and their newborns. These studies were terrible. In one study, researchers gave these women doses of iodine-131. Sadly, they all miscarried. When they did, they continued to study the women's aborted embryos. Another study took place after World War II. 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee were given vitamin drinks. They were informed that these drinks would improve their health and their babies, but it actually contained radioactive iron and the researchers wanted to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. Several of the young passed away from these experiments. Four died from cancers as a result of the experiments, and the women experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer as well. Meanwhile, they just wanted the best for their babies and thought that this drink was going to help them, not kill them. So starting off this list, in at number 10, we have keyboard shortcuts. If you push the letter K, it will stop your video. J will rewind it by about 10 second intervals. L actually fast forwards your video by 10 second intervals. M mutes the audio, you know, if you don't want to hear the audio. If you don't want to hear me talk anymore, you guys can just And if you push shift N, not right now, but that will actually skip you to the next video in the queue line. And if you go shift P, you can go to the previous video in which you guys should do now because you guys are probably watching another one of my videos. So go rewatch that video and rewatch this one. Okay, something very cool happened. Number nine, climate gate. Yeah, we had a smooth one off the bat. Now we're getting right into the serious stuff. Climate stuff, <laughs> climate change and stuff. A little different sounding than Watergate, but we'll get to that one later on, obviously. Climate Gate, this was back in 2009 when some hackers, some hackers released thousands of emails and files all from the Climate Research Unit in the UK. These documents, okay, hold on to your butts for this one, they show scientists suppressing the publication of research going against global warming. So this sparked a bunch of bad ideas because at that point in 2009, we just believed it. We just stopped listening at all. Climate change critics were like, aha, I knew it. It was all a conspiracy this whole time. The CRU responded and said the emails were out of context and that the planet is indeed heating up and we're still in fact burning towards our demise, but these docs leaked literally weeks before the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Denmark, so peculiar timing, I'd say. Science fired back pretty quick. Scientists all around the world were actively proving at that point that humans actively are causing global warming. Today we're uh, scrambling a bit more to figure this one out than 2009. Yeah, A few more of you believe this time around. Number eight, God Save the Queen. This one's quite grim, but I have to talk about it. Have you ever wondered what happens, what will happen after the Queen passes away? I mean, I know it's the last thing we want to think about right now because 
because uh, dark, obviously. But it's hard not to think of, especially when Politico magazine releases Operation London Bridge to the public. Yeah, what is that? This magazine somehow got documents showing each and every step in detail what'll happen when that fateful day arrives. There'll be phone calls to the Prime Minister, of course, would be first. Customs require that the Prime Minister is informed by the monarch's private security. Flags will fly at half-mast, of course, but oddly enough, in this document, the Queen's death is referred to as D-Day. Yeah, nine days of protocols will follow afterwards, and after a service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, that's when Queen Elizabeth will be buried with King George VI. It's dark, but I mean, imagine reading about this one morning in 2021. What an odd article. What a, what a brutal way to wake up. Number seven, secret PowerPoint. Yeah, nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but I'll do my best. Here we go. When it comes to the NSA, odds are this PowerPoint is going to be pretty juicy, right? This slideshow was often used to train US intelligence, and I gotta say, 41 pages? That's it? I did 45 on Medieval Knights in high school. That's all I'm saying, step your game up. This program was called PRISM. You probably heard about this, this is a big deal. And it cost about $20 million a year. This was the highlight of the Snowden leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. See, originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, that's when things got a little dicey as most things are with Apple. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants. Google, Skype, YouTube even, so I don't know, search history, you may wanna delete that stuff. There was a summit in California which originally was tense. The United States was accusing China of cyber attack, but right after Edward Snowden leaked the prism tea, they didn't have much power at said summit. So China and Europe's citizens were obviously not too pleased here. Yeah, leaked data, we don't, we don't like hearing about that. There's a, this one gets a little worse. Number six. Big Brother is watching. Even allies of the United States are not safe here, okay? Thanks to Snowden, our boy again, gotta mention him a couple times in this list. At the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of eyes, a lot of spies. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of dudes. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Ah, oh, brutal. She said the F word too. She's like, hey, we were friends, pal. Don't go through my phone. Don't swipe left in the photos, okay? Betrayal. Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone, like regular phone calls in Spain for the average folks. So if you thought you were off the hook, you're not, literally and figuratively. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. You know, save some tea for in person. You don't wanna give up all that good stuff on the phone. Number five, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. Yeah, this feels like yesterday. I remember this all unfolding. I was like, what, how? Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker. They're what's referred to as these white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploding them, you know? Unlike Snowden or other people. That's the key, that's the Donnie difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here, so it was a big one. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, emails, you name it, things you don't want other people knowing, let alone third parties, were all out there. If you could vote, you were exposed. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from software provider Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gillum announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. Although he conceded that it is possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from the data we make available for free to campaigns. He's like, no, we didn't do it, but maybe we did. <laughs> it's like, okay. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. That's terrifying. Time to change your email again. Number four, psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, this sounds like something Iron Man uses. It doesn't sound too chill now, does it? Psychoelectronic weapons. The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these uh, was by accident, as you could have guessed. He was receiving documents via Yahoo and they were not what he expected. See, originally he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. See, he was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right, but he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. Guy gets a zip file back in return called EM effects on human body. He's like, Big Shiny Tune 6? He's like, what? I didn't ask for this. Way too many viruses in that one. Big, Big Shiny Tune 7, I think, was a good one. That's a good one. In this document, he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. There's muscle quaking, all body pain. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams. Is this a weapon? This is, this is pretty remarkable. This was clearly sent by mistake. Ugh, the only emails I get are student loans, and those ones 
are not by mistake. Those ones are definitely on purpose. They're like, Mr. Taylor. I'm like, oh, oh God, they found me. Number three, quantum computer. Uh, this next one's pretty eye-opening. Here we go. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are also getting way too good. I've fallen for way too many fake trailers. I thought they were doing a Back to the Future reboot with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. for like four days. All fake. Whole thing's fake. But thanks to our man Snowden, the OG secret revealer, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. Yeah, how fun must that one be? I wonder if it can run Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 without getting hot. No computer can do that. It's called the Quantum Computer, and it costs about 80 million to create this program. This computer is safely stored in a massive room sized metal box, not intimidating at all. It's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, hopefully, maybe, probably, definitely not. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes years. This supercomputer they're working on can break through a lot faster. We can get through in days, even hours. So you better clear that search history now while you still can. Thanks for the hot tip, Snowden. I was gonna switch to PC gaming, but you know what? I'll wait it out. I'll wait till this new one comes out. It looks a little faster. Number two, WikiLeaks Warlogs. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're in a film studio in Toronto. We go to a certain place. We leave said certain place in a said certain area. Right? Where do places like WikiLeaks live? How do they stay secure? Well, in Stockholm, apparently, buried under 100 feet below street level in an old nuclear bunker. That's where right next to Pirate Bay. They're neighbors, actually. They knock on the cement walls. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, but Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two-foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators, so he's secure. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field reports from 2004 to 2009. Now, it's one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war out of the 109,000 confirmed in total. That's horrible. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics afterwards. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009. One of the biggest leaks in US history, no doubt about it. And finally, number one, Watergate. Yeah, it's not an internet leak, but it's too good to talk about. This is OG, come on. We have to finish on Watergate. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. Now, it was pretty obvious they intended on bugging the place. They looked like spy kids. They had all the gears. They were, you know, it was fishy. As the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that apparently the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. Yeah, he was trying to get that re-election. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported in the news and all that good stuff, Nixon was still re-elected, even though he was involved in this entire scandal. These men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement. It wasn't until a year later in 1972 when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they also came forward and exposed more stuff. Yeah, they exposed the administration's role in this entire scandal and they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Feltz, and this ultimately led to Nixon resigning later in 1974. The first president to do so. Starting off this countdown, we have the Weipholm experiments. This was a series of experiments in Sweden from 1945 to 1955. It's literally going to make you sick to your stomach when you find out what they did. Basically, they force-fed people with mental illness sweets to see if sugar was related to tooth decay. Imagine people just cramming food down your throat against your will. It's very gross. These experiments were conducted by the government and sponsored by the sugar industry. The experiments lasted for about two years, and by then, the teeth of about 50 of the subjects in the experiment had been completely ruined. What is in at number nine? If you guys type in, use the force, Luke, it makes your screen shift from side to side, up and down, giving it an effect that you're using the force to move your screen. Just don't do it for too long because it will make you dizzy, and it's a probably a really bad idea to do it while you're drunk. Or you know what, maybe this can be a prank video. You can convince someone how drunk they are. Hey buddy, look at the screen. Things are moving? Not for me. Okay, in at number eight, if you guys type into YouTube search bar, do the Harlem Shake. Remember when that thing was like popular? Well, this happens. Then do the Harlem Shake.
I mean, isn't this the coolest thing ever? The Harlem Shake has become an internet sensation since 2013. The most viewed videos were the Army Edition, which is like the original Army Edition because there's so many of them. The Miami Heat, when LeBron James was on the team, he used to be my favorite team when he was on it. Well, they did their version of it. You can see Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, LeBron James shaking. There was a video called Kids React to the Harlem Shake, and it was uploaded by the Fine Brothers. It was very entertaining. Okay, if you guys type in Doogee Meme into the search bar into YouTube, it will transform your YouTube page into a colorful display, and it's actually really cool and a beautiful thing to look at. And this comes in to number seven. So this was actually created back in 2013. I'm not really sure the purpose of it, but I'm sure it took a lot of work to develop. A lot of great minds behind something just so simple. Once you click on the video to watch, the colors disappear. So no worries, it won't be like this forever. What made Dodgy Meme very popular was Weird Al Yankovic, go figure. I mean, he uses one of his videos called Word Crimes. All right, in at number, Okay, if you guys type in www.youtube.com slash leanback, this transform your YouTube page into something that resembles Netflix. So now you don't need your mouse to control anything. You can just take out your iPhone. No, okay, you, you can just use the keyboard. When you click on a video to watch, it looks exactly like Netflix. Everything just seems so organized. So now you guys can YouTube and chill. Okay, so what's even cooler than that I got something better in at number five. If you type in SS before any YouTube video, it will automatically take you to a website that you can actually download YouTube videos in. So now you can download your favorite videos and show other people. Although you can just go to YouTube and type in your favorite videos, so. But I guess you could take the videos, you can like archive them or like edit them together and make like a mashable video, a cool epic video. Maybe you guys can take all my videos and make like a cool mashup of it. Or you can take the videos, put it on a USB, put it in your TV, and then you can watch YouTube on TV if you don't already have a smart TV. Well, you just kind of made your TV smart. Okay, so in at number four, just like number five, if you type in GIF before a YouTube video, this will allow you to create GIFs of your favorite moments in a YouTube video. I mean, who doesn't want to create their own GIFs? Creating GIFs has been around since 1987, but now it's easier than ever to create your own and post them on popular social media sites to share it with your family and friends. GIF actually stands for Graphic Interchange Format, but ain't nobody got time for that, so let's just call it GIFs, because it just works. Originally, the name for GIFs was actually gonna be 87A to represent the year that it was created, but thank God we don't call it 87A. Okay, so testing its way into the number three spot. If you guys type in www.youtube.com slash test tube, this will allow you to test upcoming YouTube features. This is a secret. And you can find out what's gonna be updated before anyone else does. So when the new things do come out, you're already an expert. And also you can get into the mindset of YouTube and how they're thinking. You'll be able to see new features, concepts, and layouts. Okay, so moving right along, if you guys go to moomah.sh, copy and paste a YouTube link into that, and the site is gonna be able to identify any songs in that video. So you know how you're watching a video and you're like, oh my God, I love that song, what is it? Well, take that video, copy it into that, and then boom, you're gonna know what song it was. I think that is just so awesome, but you know what? We have finally made it into the number one spot. So let's just quickly recap of all the YouTube secrets that I've been sharing with you guys, but you guys gotta keep it shh. We have YouTube shortcuts that can fast forward your videos or even rewind it, or you can even mute it. I taught you how to use the force. You can now do the Harlem Shake. You're now able to change your color on YouTube. You can download YouTube videos and you can find out what songs people are using in their popular videos. You can test out future YouTube projects before anyone else does. Well, in at the number one spot right now, you can now create your own floating YouTube player. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh my God, Lana, what the heck are you talking about? Float a YouTube player. Well, we're of the future and now you can get this thing. It's a Chrome extension that allows you to have just like, it's a screen that's just the size of a YouTube video and you can put it anywhere on your screen. And it's a lot better than watching it on a browser because you can actually browse while watching YouTube videos. You can just shrink it up in the corner. And I know you guys are like, well, I can just take the YouTube page and shrink it up in the corner. But you see all this other stuff. The YouTube player, it just has it takes away all that crap and it just has the video. 